does the ball swing? For the first of our two feature pieces on swing bowling, we asked around to find who the players thought was a master of his craft in county cricket, and everyone agreed on one name. Glen Chapel. So we went up to Old Trafford to enjoy a masterclass, drawing on more than 20 years of top class experience and his progression through the coach education pathway to level four. What's also extraordinary about filming this session is that there was a Royal London One Day Cup match the next day on that very strip. So Glen was only allowed to bowl 18 deliveries in total to try and demonstrate all of the variations. In other words, no fancy TV editing techniques possible here. See for yourself how he got on. Principles of swing bowling, really, it comes down to the direction of the seam and how nicely you can present the seam. If you think about the seam as a rudder, if you like, setting the direction the ball's going to swing in, and you can get the ball presented in that direction, that is it, really. There's all sorts of technical aspects to bowling. Probably everyone from my generation who worked through it would have old-fashioned principles, side-on approach and things like that. Really, all that matters is how the ball comes out of your hand and, and in relation to your wrist, the action of your arm and your action. All that really matters in the end is how the ball comes out. So we've seen over the years all kinds of different actions of being able to swing the ball. There are actions technically that are better than others, but what really counts is how the ball comes out. I'll stick to my basics and bowl an outswinger. <laughs> The wrist position I have for an outswinger is basically I think about the ball as, as part of myself until it leaves or even as it's travelling down the pitch. I try and get my wrist in sync with the angle of the seam. So it's pretty much locked there. Well, I will always push with that middle finger and let it carry on its path. Oh no. Is that an expensive piece of kit? The first one was slightly full, a bit outside off stump. It was probably a wicket taking ball, but not the area I was exactly looking to hit. Slightly full. The third one was pretty much on the money, top of the stumps, shaping away. I would presume they had a good seam direction because they all shape nicely. I can put it in my hand without looking and that's, that's pretty much the grip. If I'm being a coach now, I would say that looks a little bit too skewed towards third slip. You would probably say that's the, that's the angle, so you would aim somewhere between first and second slip. But if I just put it in as I normally do, that's where it goes and it's like that. So I've got all the pressure on my middle finger there. My theory with that was always that because it's the longest finger, it's the last one it touches. Thumbs placed flush on the middle of the seam on its edge. For the in-swing, I would go the same, but twist the ball round to point to a fine, fine leg. In theory, you would always say the thumb is flat. My thumb is nearly flat, but it's, it's just not comfortable to go any further. That's how I get it. But my focus is still really on my middle finger. <laughs> I like that one. The first one was, you always have this, how much is it going to swing? Don't want to leave it too wide. From a spectator's point of view, they would see a leg side ball as being a waste. I would say that's probably gone to the keeper for no runs. Whereas if I hang the first one wide outside off stump, it might get crashed through the covers for four. So I always err on the tight side to not give any width. Whilst it was a poor delivery, I got the next two in the right area. Technically, they were all reasonable. And the first one wasn't in the right area, but it did swing. One thing I've got to be careful of personally when I bowl the in-swinger is whilst I'm trying to push the ball in with my wrist, I have to try and avoid falling away. So I've got to stand up, retain balance above my feet and follow through on the line of target. I felt that I did that okay there. That was something I'd be happy with. Idiosyncrasies of my action, when I'm bowling the away swing, I like to end up on the other side of where it swings with my weight. And I feel like I need to do that with the in-swinger, but actually it's retain balance and go to target. 
Do you want to go something else? I've got a wobble scene. Can I do the wobble scene? Yeah, let's do right. It. I missed the scene. As the scene was wobbling through the air, it's obviously come down on the shiny side actually, so it's probably a reason to not do it too early, but it's an option. Hitting the leather instead of the seam will sometimes make it skid on, may bounce a little bit lower, but we'll certainly do something slightly different to hitting the seam. And the way I do it, there's there's no rocket science behind this at all, really. I set the seam as, as if I'm going to bowl an in-swinger, but instead of following the path of the seam with my fingers, I pulled straight back on the ball, so the ball actually rotates straight backwards, but the seam is offset, so therefore it comes down with a wobble. To my mind, there's no great skill in it. It actually it just gives you some variation for the rest of your spell. The last thing I'd want to do would put myself out there as an expert on reverse swing. There would be plenty of bowlers out there who would know more than me. I have played with Wazim though and at the time there was definitely a theory that the low arm would be conducive to bowling reverse swing. Wazim had all the tricks in the book but he did it with a totally different action to me. We would talk about tactics and how to get batsmen out at the sharp end of the game, that's what really counts. The way I look at it now is that the reverse stands for both the shiny side and the seam. So you would bowl a reverse in-swinger with an outswing grip. If you go back to the low arm and you hold it with a straight seam and you go that way, that almost replicates an away swinger's grip. So it would still swing away from the rough side on a downward path. And I would guess that that's very effective. Uh, a lot of people over the years have bowled with a slightly low arm and been able to get good results. However, if you don't want to change your action because you feel that you need to keep grooving the same action, use the standard outswinger's grip with a tall arm and should be able to achieve reverse swing that way. Well, we're getting into science that I'm not 100% clear on. It's, it's something to do with the airflow over the ball. The traditional way of swinging the ball, the shiny side flies through the air slightly quicker and the seam acts as a rudder. Something happens to the airflow over the ball with the rough side. Now the rough is created legally over the course of an innings on an abrasive pitch and left to stay dry and scuffed. So sweaty palms would encourage the, the rough side to go smooth and to gain weight by the sweat going soaking into the leather. The actual science behind it seems to be changing year on year and may remain somewhat of a mystery to people without a PhD. <laughs> We've got four different types of slow ball. Slow off cutter, off cutter, leg cutter and out the back of the hand. I'm not sure that my body will allow that out the back of the hand but we can give it a go. Over the years, the one out of the back of the hand has come in and we've all tried it. I have had a couple of seasons where I felt like I got to grips with it really well, but it's something that you need to perfect. It's a real art. The bowlers who first started by Ian Harvey, uh, Rana Naveed, exceptional exponents of, of the back of the hand ball. At f played at full speed from the batter's perspective, the first time you see it, it just looks like a normal seamer, but it comes out high and has drop on it. So that's, that was a real wicket-taking ball. My first slow ball was a, an off cutter with, a, with the ball held as far back in my hand as I could get it to reduce the lever and to pull down at release, pull down to the leg side, creating some off spin, the illusion to the batter that it's an, it's an off break while still retaining the arm speed. So you've got two folds, you've got hopefully a little bit of lateral movement and you've got the 10, 15 mile an hour drop in speed. That was my first one which I would say 70% of bowlers chose to use because it was the easiest one to develop. <laughs> Nowadays, the, the subtlety in 2020 cricket has come in whereby batters are trying to hit, hit you out the park every ball. So you need a few different variations, but they all need to land. Now the one way you take it away from the batsman is now working to a, to a fair degree. So an off, an off cutter to a left-hander or a leg cutter to a right-hander, bowled, bowled quite straight on the line of the legs and going away. Well, we've all got our theories and scientists nowadays can laugh at some of our old-fashioned theories. So um, when you're recording things like this, you've got to be very careful. You don't talk a lot of nonsense, really. Bowlers would say when there's moisture in the atmosphere, maybe, maybe when there's moisture coming up off the ground, warm weather, but with moisture in it would be 
most bowlers would agree, then it, it's going to swing. Overcast uh, conditions where the cloud is low, it's humid, certainly. Places around the country, notoriously lowered, headingly, can change out of all recognition session by session. So a pitch that, that plays flat one session can then start to go around corners on the next session. Sometimes when we play near the seaside, we swear blind that the tide's coming in and there's moisture off the sea. We play over at Liverpool near the river. Sometimes we swear that the third session it starts to swing around. The condition of the ball is vital. You will try and keep both sides of the ball damage free as much as possible. Now, the best way to do that is to not get hit. Hit the seam. The scientists would say that the prouder the seam, the more chance you have of the ball swinging. So that would suggest that the new ball will, will swing for longer than and maybe the old ball. But in practice, we can get old balls swinging from time to time as well. And another one gone now. Great bowling from Chapel.